love and trust is what he most wants in order to be able to heal this wound with humans, but he doesn't feel able to receive it yet. And as you are helping him clear this anger, it's like, you know, you might have tried to show him love or I might have tried to show him love, but what would rise in him was the anger. And that creates distrust on our end. And so then he was feeling very frustrated with that. Because so it's like he's trying to get a message to me about something that's wrong. Maybe with him, maybe with me. Mm, I'm feeling tr it's about trust. And he's displeased because I'm not getting it. Yeah, he's, <laughs> I'm feeling he's displeased with you that you don't trust him. Okay. That's what I'm feeling. Well, yeah. how am I supposed I know. to trust you when I you know, do that to buddy. me? I don't I know, know if you could feel that, but he just, I like, can feel it. he zinged me. I know, I could feel it. Cobra, what are we supposed to do with that? How can we help you? Give him the chance to prove himself. Give him the chance to show. How can you guys heal that? That's the feeling, is how can the two of you rebuild that trust? You know what I mean? So when you say that, I get the feeling that I've become the stand-in. Okay. Mm, so yes. Is that it? For all of the humans who oh, okay. who've abused him. Okay. So I'm surrogating for them. Mm, okay. Okay. Okay, but we need to do this in a way that I feel a little bit safer. So do we need distance? I don't want to stand that close to you. Okay. Okay, so he wants a tapping session. Okay. So um, we're going to do a laser tapping session for Cobra. And I'm going to surrogate tap for him on behalf of the abuse he suffered mm. at the hands of other humans. So I am Cobra tapping for Cobra. I am Cobra tapping for Cobra. I am Cobra tapping for Cobra. So we're going to start with step one, which is to um, outline the issue. So even though I was terribly, brutally abused by humans, nonetheless, I choose to love and accept myself anyway. And even though the humans were mean and ignorant and taking out their own pain on my body and my psyche, and even though I understand that it doesn't change what I suffered and what I went through in my physical and energetic body. And nonetheless, I choose to love and accept myself anyway. Even though there's a part of me that never wants to love and accept myself after what happened to me, nonetheless, maybe someday I can love and accept myself anyway. And even though it was super, 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 super off the charts, insanely awful and hideous and horrendous what they did to me, both before and after, during my castration. Nonetheless, I choose to love and accept myself anyway. Okay, so now we're going to go to step two, which is venting it out as I tap through all of the points. So I'm going to swear. So if you have little ones around, put your headphones on because I have to swear to be able to express what he's feeling. Mm -hmm. These fucking monsters, they nearly fucking killed me. They brutalized me. They terrified me. They took all of the pain and desolation and evil that was inside of themselves from what had been done to them by other humans and they spewed it all over me. My pristine body, my beautiful eternal spiritual self and they polluted me with their shit pile. They spread their filth all over and into me, even into my blood and the tissues and cells of my body and I fucking hate them. I'm so angry. I'm so fucking angry. I'm so angry I could kill somebody, but I won't 
because I'm not like that. I'm different. And I have not lost who I am no matter what they did to me. But I'm so angry. All this anger. This is such a huge anger. And I don't know how to deal with it. I don't know how to let it go. But I'm getting really tired of feeling it all the time. And this is maybe the worst thing that they did to me. Was to put all of this anger inside of me. And now it's stuck there. And I don't know how to get it out. So now we're going to go to step three. And I love how Zeta has come over yes. here to support Cobra. Because Zeta herself has released a whole bunch of anger and frustration. So I'm going to move. So step three, I just can't get far enough away from you, can I? Yeah. I need to be heard on the video. Okay, how about I stand here? No. Okay, step three, we're going to get into the physical body. And we're going to feel for where this molten ball of lava anger lives <laughs> in Cobra's body. <laughs> I'm going to put my car between us. <laughs> Cobra, where do you want me to stand? Let's see. Everybody wants to help you, Cobra. It's kind of amazing how they're all coming forward to participate in loving you and helping you release. We're all here for you. I hope you know that. All of us are here for you. So what I'm getting from him is that this is so intense for him right now mm -hmm. but it would really help if i gave everybody some alfalfa and they could kind of discharge through chewing and eating and give a little bit of a different focus because the energy is it's too much it's too much it's too intense yeah okay. and he needs he needs a little something to kind of drain out the intensity so we're going to take a break okay we're going to give them all some alfalfa and come back to it okay so step three we're going to go into the physical body now that they've got some alfalfa to take away a bit of the intensity. Um, so I'm just going to take a moment to scan Cobra's body and if I wasn't here physically with him, in fact I can do it the same way as if I would be at home tapping for him. I'm just going to close my eyes and I'm going to imagine scanning his body. And this, if this anger lived somewhere in my body, because I'm Cobra, remember? If this anger lived somewhere inside my body, it would be in my feet. It would be a fire, like I see it as red, but it's so hot, it's almost white. Mm -hmm. So it's like a white hot red. And and it's a fire. So its shape and its texture <laughs> is fire. Um, so now I'm gonna tap through all of the points using that representation of his body because the body is the subconscious. And we are dialoguing with the subconscious. We are dialoguing with the tissues and cells. So instead of us having to go through a lengthy process, we can kind of roll it all up into this one symbolic representation and we can access all of those aspects by saying, starting at the top of the head, this red, white hot ball of fire, anger, in my hooves. 
this red white hot ball of fire anger in my feet. This red white hot ball of fire in my hooves. I close my eyes and I take a deep breath. And I scan my body again to see what's happened with that fire. And I feel like I need to talk about it some more. So I'm gonna go back to the top, to the top of my head. This white hot ball of fire. So I'm going back to step two, which is venting. <laughs> this white hot ball of fire in my hooves. It's raging, but I'm trapped. I'm burning to get away. I'm burning to run. I'm burning to kick and paw and stomp. And I am powerless. I am roped with all four of my legs immobilized. And my back legs are wrenched to the point where they are in pain, even if I don't move them. And this fire is literally burning me alive and I can't even move, let alone defend myself or run away or attack or anything. These horrific monster humans, why are they on this planet? Why do we let them do the things they do? The bigger, wiser part of me understands why. The higher, Wow. So that was a massive fart <laughs> yeah. from Kalia, the black horse. Is that I, who it was? That was Kalia. <gasps> wow. When I asked that question. Yes. Why do we let humans be on this planet? And do what they're doing. Yep. That's incredible. I've never heard a horse fart that loud in my entire <laughs> life. And you can see from the other horse's response, they have never either. Yeah. And Odie came over and is watching. She is like, what are you doing over there? Amazing. That was literally like a gunshot. Yep. You've lost your tape. Yeah, that was really big. That was intense. Yeah. So even though the wiser spiritual part of me knows why we are all here on this planet together and has wisdom about the roles that humans are supposed to be holding and serving and performing on this planet. My physical horse self is raging with anger. This white hot raging fire in my hooves where I am trapped. I am lying on the ground completely immobilized because this is what humans do to each other to the environment, to our world, and to animals. Mm. <laughs> I feel like he couldn't even be with us right now. No, he's like, Anna, I'm walking away. He can't be near humans right now. I can't, well, I can't even, I can't even. Even though the humans are now helping me, and even though the humans hold the key to the healing of the abuse that they inflicted on me, the ones who created the damage also hold the ability to heal the damage. And I am here, I know, to help them because I am wiser and older and more mature. But it's goddamn hard work. And a part of me wishes I'd never agreed to this role. A part of me wishes I was never born here and that I never incarnated here and that I could have put a stop to it. But there's another part of me that knows I am a mighty warrior. I am a wise king leader and I am doing this because I can, because I hold sufficient power and frequency to perform this role for the collective, for the bigger purpose that we're all here for, 
that some humans are aware of, but many are not. And that's okay. And maybe, just maybe, there's a place of forgiveness somewhere in this hot, flaming mess. So already on his own, because we're done venting and we've really gotten to every piece of, of the intensity of the emotion that Cobra's feeling, and, and I can still feel it, mm -hmm. um, it's still very strong, but there's a part of Cobra that's willing and ready to move to step four, which is opening to new possibilities. And it just came out naturally. Maybe there's, there's a space in me that can open to a higher wisdom. Maybe, just maybe, there's a place in me that's willing to open the door to forgiveness just a little bit I don't have to do it all at once. It's too much for me, but I can start the process. I can start opening the possibility of forgiveness just a little bit, step by step. So notice how right now we're tiptoeing around the subconscious because the role of the ego and the subconscious is to maintain the status quo because whatever is known is safe. And so when we are introducing a big change or a big shift, we're going to unbalance the organism and the ego and the subconscious is going to pull us back to where they know, even though it doesn't serve us anymore. So the way that we get around that is we tiptoe around the subconscious and we say, maybe just maybe, perhaps there's a possibility. Maybe I could do this just a little bit at a time. So when you're doing step four and you're opening to these possibilities, use those kind of languaging and that kind of phrasing as you because your your mind is going to want to just i'm ready to let this go and i'm willing to open to let no you can't because this is not about your mind this is about your ego and your subconscious and the body as the densest part of the soul the body is the subconscious that's the level we're working at here we're not working with your mind if we could just work with your mind we could all go to a psychotherapist or talk to our friend and vent it all out and achieve shift and we all know that doesn't happen so we're going to keep working on step number four this opening to new possibilities but we're going to keep it within the framework of very gentle suggestions just a, to to keep the ego feeling like it's going to be okay and that it's it can stay safe and it can maintain that homeostasis while we gradually, ever so slowly, shift to a new reality. So maybe, just maybe, there's a way this bigger, wiser part of me can come through a little more strongly and can start to take dominance over the wounded horse part of me, the earthbound physical part of me that has been so damaged and so destitute and so devastated and so destroyed. And maybe just maybe instead of connecting and living and dwelling in that part of me, I can begin to move slowly, slowly, to the higher, wiser part of me that is connected to the knowledge of all things, that is connected to the bigger picture, that understands what is actually happening here on this planet and in the evolution of consciousness. And maybe, just maybe, I can start to live a little more from that place. And maybe, just maybe, I can pull a little more of that reality, that wisdom, that perspective into my daily physical horse life here in the physical world in here and now. Oh my gosh, that would be such a relief if I could do that. I would so be open to the possibility of bringing more of that part of my knowledge and reality into my physical self. My mind, body, and spirit would like to open to that possibility just a little bit, slowly, a little bit at a time, but 
we're ready to open to that new possibility of bringing my higher, wiser self, my huge, massive consciousness where there is no pain and there is no light and dark and all is just one and all things work together for good. I'm willing to bring just a little bit of that consciousness into my physical, earthly self right now. Opening to that possibility right now. My mind, body, and soul opening just a little bit. Opening a little bit more. Slowly, slowly, whatever is comfortable for me. Opening to that new possibility. Opening to that new reality. Willing to give a space for that to permeate down to the physical horse part of me the part of me that resides on this planet in this time-bound continuum, in this place of restricted time and space, bringing in that greater, bigger, wiser, universal, divine consciousness into my reality here. Opening right now. Zora says we're done. <laughs> Opening right now. Opening now. Opening now. Thank you, Zozie. Thank you. And where is Cobra? Cobra went and hid in the sleeping area. He's, he's yeah. gone. He so as you were filming mm -hmm. this session, what were you feeling? A lot of things. And very intensely. It was amazing. It, it was almost as soon as the words started to come out of your mouth. Um, it felt to me like what he was asking of me. Oh, hello was to hold the emotional container um, or at least have somebody witness that, you know, where you could be the one to verbalize it and help him move it. Um, there was just an element of that. It was the same when we did his healing way back to kind of restore his testicles, you know what I mean? It was just so much needed to be felt. So yeah, so much pain, sadness. I just immediately started crying. Um, and then the anger, I started to get hot and flushed when you're doing that fire part. And then um, there was this feeling near the end when you were doing integration that was really about love and trust. Mm -hmm. And for him, and I do also think that's part of why he left. Partly, yes, it was integrating and clearing all that intense emotion, but I think it was also partly to help us understand, but for him to also process how he's supposed to integrate now with the humans in his life, right? Where he had all of this intense emotional wounding and he, he wants love and connection, um, but yet it's almost like it was associated with fear and anger. And so we were both feeling that. It was like, what's that grumpy, snappy energy that comes out where he, he wants to love and engage, but he kind of, uh. he can't quite find the way to do it. And um, so it was just that, feeling of in order for him to get over that hump he needed you to facilitate the clearing of all this intense emotional holding and then it's almost like what he showed me was just pure love like that what he needs from the humans now is to be able to feel that pure love right um and that doesn't even mean we need to be close to him when we're showing him that pure love right and i think that may be part of why he went all the way over there right um because it's the touching part that, you know, was triggering for him or would cause him to feel unsafe or angry and, and things like that. But yeah, so amazing. So if you have a horse that is in a similar emotional state to Cobra, where the horse wants connection, but then you feel there's like anger or they reach out for connection, but you don't feel they're quite safe. There's that yes, no thing happening there. Um, go ahead and do this tapping session and at the beginning where I said I'm Cobra tapping for Cobra you just insert the name of your horse like if I were doing it for Macaw here I would say I'm Macaw tapping for Macaw and, Macaw and then I would do the session just following along with whatever I said and of course if there's something that doesn't feel true or right just change the words because once you plug into your horse or your dog or um, perhaps even there's a human in your life who you feel a similar um, 
space where they've been really brutalized by other humans and so they want to get past that and they want to connect but they can't um, you can do the same type of surrogate session uh, for them so interesting that Kalia has come over just as I'm talking about that Kalia is the one who let out that gunshot fart um, and she too she's a wild mustang who was culled from her herd and she has gone through quite a bit of trauma at the hands of humans but she also very much holds the volcano energy of Kali. So she asked for a name that had Kali in her name. Um, and that's part of what she holds the space in this herd and on this planet. So there's some videos with her, with messages from her. So perhaps she wants to bring forward the aspect of her energy. Oh, of course, the <laughs> you're so stupid. <laughs> Hello, the fire. Yeah. The fire of the volcano, the fire that burns away and transforms mm -hmm. is again, it's a super negative, but it's a super positive phoenix rising from the ashes opportunity for transformation. And so are we better off for never having burned in the fire? Mm. Or are we better off for having burned in the fire and risen anew? into a new, bigger, multifaceted, hugely more compassionate, hugely wiser and more powerful in, in terms of real power, which is compassion and wisdom and unconditional love. Do we have more of all of those things after we've been through the fire and transformed it and risen like the phoenix from the ashes? Hell yes! <laughs> and that is the message of Kalia, Kalia. Mm -hmm. um, so I, it's been an amazing day and I really hope you guys can take this tool and use it with your own kids, humans, animals land you may have land that feels this way mm -hmm. it's all good we're all connected we're all part of the web of consciousness so namaste